Welcome everyone to the podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Plevin. I'm a tiny house designer, builder, advocate, author, and I am vice president of the Tiny House Alliance USA. Today, we have a special guest that we'll be talking to who built her tiny house in just, wow, seven days. You're gonna have to hear her story. Today we are featuring Melanie Copeland. Melanie is a board member of the Tiny House Alliance USA, the Tiny House DIYer, uh, an advocate, as well as a Tiny House author. Melanie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks for letting me be here. Fantastic. I see you're sitting in your tiny house right now. It looks great. I, um, thank you. I didn't spend any time cleaning it. <laughs> Well, a tiny house doesn't require a lot of time. You could probably knock that out. Oh, I'm thinking in 15 minutes. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, <laughs> Melanie, we are all excited to know how you built this tiny house in just seven days. Yeah, so we had a really long seven days. <laughs> it sounds um, overwhelming when you think about building a tiny house in seven days. We actually worked with a company that provided us the basic shell um, and they did the roof and they had the trailer and then um, we yeah so the basic framing was done when we started and framing is usually about 30 percent of a build roughly for most of the stuff that I've worked on and then a group of us spent seven days there was five of us that came and spent seven days uh, doing all the rest of the work for the whole house. And it was crazy because none of us really had any experience doing this. <laughs> so we were, yeah, we were trying to learn all the tools and learn how to, you know, make all the cuts right. And we had a supervisor who, you know, made sure that we knew what we were doing safety wise with the equipment and Very walked nice. us through it all. And we just divided up in teams and, a uh, team of two was on one side of the house, a team of two was on the other. And because I've been through a uh, reconstructive knee surgery, I was terrified to build and do, you know, this type of work because it was not, I'm like, I don't want to end up with, you know, going Very back physical. to surgery. Very physical. Yeah. yeah. So I told them, I said, you teach me every tool, teach me every tool because I can stand there and use those tools. And I think I cut every board on this house. <laughs> it was, and even that is a lot of work. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 So, but it was a lot of fun. And I think the key to building a tiny house that fast is you just have to build it simple. Our home is very simple. There's not a lot of stuff that's gone into making it complex. It was a very easy build. And we've added as we've lived in it because we learned those skills. Okay. Um, did I cover your background? Did I dwell on everything? Or uh, is there more you want to tell us about your, your background in the uh, tiny house movement industry or, or ideology? Right. And my husband and I decided that we wanted to do the you know, live tiny, live free thing. Sounds great on paper. It's really rough to play out in the real world. Um, but we decided that we were going to go for it. And it was, it was really due in part to me being laid off almost every year for mm. seven years. Yeah. And every time I would, you know, I'd get a job and I'd work for a year and it would get right to the point where I was getting ready to get the 401k and, you know, all the benefits from the company. And then in came the layoff and then they'd hire somebody else that they didn't have to give those things to. And I was out of a job. 
Um, a couple of my jobs were shipped overseas. So I was just, I was frustrated and we were scared that we were just going to lose everything constantly and we couldn't get ahead. And I thought, you know, I've done it. We did it right. We did everything right. We, we got married. We went to college. We have degrees. We worked. And yet it didn't matter how hard we worked. We just, we just couldn't get anywhere with it. We were, we were like on the cusp of losing everything like most continuously Americans. for 10 years. And I just said, there has to be something else that I can do because I'm exhausted. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. Exactly. And um, so the, the layoff came in my last layoff. <laughs> I haven't had any more in 2017. And that was Christmas, right? A couple days before Christmas. We built our house, we downsized everything we owned and built our house in February of 2018. So we did the whole process, the deciding, the building and the moving in, in about two to three months. <laughs> so it was pretty crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. really fast. I mean, you wanna talk about jumping in, we jumped, we left. We, we were just like all in right now, so. Um, every part of us, the build was fast, the moving was fast, the downsizing was fast, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Fantastic. <laughs> well, that's great. great to hear. Oh, can you tell us a little bit more about your experiences uh, with, with just your tiny house lifestyle? It's like, and why did you even choose to go tiny? Yeah, well, the money was one. Um, okay. that was, that was one of the biggest draws for us and to the ability to move our home because we thought, well, if one of us got a really good opportunity, we wouldn't have to give up our equity. We could just take it with us. Um, so those were the two biggest reasons that we chose to, and to have a safety net. Like this is a home that I own. Nobody's exactly. coming to take this away from me. I, I am paid. I am done. We purchased our land last year, and my mortgage on my land is $93 a month. Oh, my. <laughs> so <laughs> you, know, you, I that you definitely my, believe that going tiny was the right choice for you. Yeah, this, this yeah. was, a, you know, unfortunately, there's not a lot of people that are able to buy land and do what I'm doing and be part on, on hard. my own land. I had to work through zoning. I had to work through the health department, the building inspectors. It was it was a lot of work to get on this land. Right. And I hope that in the future that that will open up for more people because I, I fully believe that, you know, tiny homes are prominent in tiny house communities and maybe even in backyards to some extent in certain areas. But most of the time we end up in, in campgrounds or RV parks and it's not really a spot for a full-time dweller. And mm -hmm. I have lived in an RV park. We lived in one for seven months and we also lived in a backyard. And I feel like this option should be available as long as you're able to be safe and properly hooked up on your land. Mm -hmm. So I hope some of the stuff we're doing with the Tiny House Alliance and the ASTM initiative will open up doors for more areas to let us in. <laughs> what I'm praying for, yeah. It's yeah. so it, needed, it really you know, is. Just... <laughs> not only nationally, but globally, with globally. A, a global standard for tiny yeah. homes everywhere. Boy, that'd be, yeah. that's the only affordable housing out there. You know, that's... It is, and and the ability to actually own a home and have it paid off and done, and, and, uh, and on top of it to know you built it. So if there's anything, wrong with it you know how to fix it it's just <laughs> there's it's so very much rewarding. freedom yeah yeah freedom yeah. and pride and just mm -hmm. that goes into doing that that right. i really wish more people understood how that felt <laughs> i believe more and more are coming aboard and seeing this i really do you know with the yeah. facebook groups that i have and that i manage during the day as well uh you know i'm letting in i've got one group alone that i let in about 600 people a day so wow. it, it, it's just growing. The, yeah. the, the amount of people that want uh, information and uh, resources uh, for tiny houses, it's just, it, it's a yeah. It's well, it doesn't cool. surprise me. I mean, we have a housing, we have a housing problem in this country and we need to address it somehow. It's, and the, this is a, a very affordable way to 
live and live simply and within your means. And right. I mean, there's so many advantages to it. It's, it's a very calm lifestyle. At least it's been very calm for peaceful. us. Peaceful. Yeah, it's peaceful. And not that it didn't come with the stress because we, when we were hiding, we, in the backyard, we were definitely stressed about getting zoning, you know, notices and stuff like that. And there's challenges to it. I mean, moving yeah. is always scary. When you put your house on the road, you're like, oh, please don't hit my house. <laughs> I just love the tiny groove pine in your, on your walls. And thanks. Uh, it, it's uh, fantastic. I mean, it's such a warm look, you know. Initially, when we started building, we, we were doing quite a few of those. And, and now with the developments that they have with the uh, engineered ship lap and all that, yep. uh, more, more people are kind of gravitating towards that type of look because then they can, they can paint it whiter and the other colors do accent walls and things right. like that. So that's getting very popular now as well. Yeah. Um, so you, you're happy you went this route, uh, building on your own versus possibly using a builder out there, but it worked for you. Right. And you feel you saved enough money doing this and, and you, it, it was, it was a true advantage to go this route rather than, uh, yeah. using a builder possibly. Yeah, absolutely. I okay. mean, I, initially we thought we, we did look at buying a traditional home and we exactly. had great credit and we could have bought a traditional home but it would have been in our area it would have been about a four hundred thousand dollar fixer upper yeah yeah instead i spent twenty seven thousand dollars to build a brand new home uh, that i could move seven Mm. with no debt walking away and, and of then, course that was before the the lumber hike over here and sure the, um as you know every, built, uh, the lumber's just gone skyrocketing and yeah uh, it's nuts and, that was three and a half years ago so we were yeah. way before that ever happened but yeah that's scary and in fact i think the company um so the company that I did the workshop with they don't do it anymore incredible tiny homes doesn't do those workshops but they listed my model up there. And for them to build Serenitas today, it would be like $54,000. So that's just the price increase in the wood. Exactly. And, and, exactly. and their labor because they would be building it and not a, you know, a group of volunteers like we built it. But still, that's a significant increase in compared to what we paid and built it ourselves. Okay. And I think there's advantages to building it yourself, but there's also disadvantages because <laughs> yeah. there's, our, you know, we built this house so fast that there's like some of the boards I'll look at in my walls and they'll be like, have a gap in them or, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, why did I decide that day that that was okay? Oh, because I had seven days to build a house. So we're going to run it. Understood. Understood. <laughs> you know, so that it's not a, it's not perfect. I mean, it has its little flaws, but we love the fact that we left like our writing on the boards and just polyurethaned over those. So we can see, you know, two and a quarter inches written randomly around the house. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. 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 On the pieces of wood and stuff. Yeah, so it just, yeah, it just kind of made it our own. Character memories. Right. Well, yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Hey, listen, um, I want to switch gears here a little bit and talk about something else. Um, okay. Melanie Copeland, you are <laughs> an author of the book Trailblazing Tiny. A I guide, am. A guide to breaking free. What prompted you to write this book? So I have been in multiple Facebook groups since I built the tiny and everything and have followed lots of people that follow my journey. And the amount of questions that I got is, how do you do this? You know, how did, how did you downsize? People want to know, how did you design your house? What tools did you use? How did you make it happen? And you get so many questions over several years. And I thought, you know, there's, there's so much to going tiny. It, we have to be so many things as consumers. We have to, you know... We have to downsize everything we own. We have to get rid of our, our whole lifestyle that we knew and come into this whole different lifestyle, trying to figure out how are we going to cook? How are we going to get hot water? How are we gonna, like every question that you never have to really think about. 
And then you have to it decide. It lays it all on the line now. You have to, yeah, you have to yeah. know it and you have to do it. Yeah. Are you going to build this? Are you going to get a builder? And then once you get it and it's parked and you move into it, you're like, well, where do I put it? Where am I going to live in this? How am I going to handle the mental that comes with it? You know, just being able to downsize and live in a smaller space with less. Because there's that too. You're, you're going to end up with more time and all of a sudden you're going to go, hey, I don't have to spend a whole day cleaning my house. I guess I can go for a bike ride. <laughs> I just, we're getting ready to go on our third vacation in a year and a half. Wow, Twice we've been nice. out of the country. And we, I did a, lifestyle. yeah, I did a 10 day stretch on the AT backpacking and I don't have to ask a boss for time off anymore. So I thought if I write this book and I, share my journey and what we did it's great that people understand what we did and what our journey was but more important to me was how can I help somebody else do this too because living this lifestyle is hard and it's confusing and there's so many things that I thought a little workbook or something that somebody can hold and they can write down what their lofts are supposed to be like and how they want to design their kitchen and things that can help them downsize. And so I've actually got a copy of it right here. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so this is not a little book. Um, no, it's not a little book. Well over 400 pages. Very and nice. In the back, there's, you know, like worksheet pages for people yeah. to write down all of their stuff. And there's graph pages and um, different journaling sections. And there's prompts and questions as you go along. Plus, I've interviewed 16 other tiny house dwellers, professionals, and, um, you know, just people that are in the industry, everyday people that are in the industry, right. and everyday tiny house dwellers to kind of get their experience for each area that we went through. So if I lived in an RV park, I interviewed somebody else who lived in an RV park. If I bought land, I interviewed somebody else who bought land. Wow. So nice. it would show a different perspective than just my story. So I hope it'll help a lot of people walk through the whole, the whole journey and uh, be able to get a really good way to start and keep it all in one spot. Because when we went tiny, we had all these papers all over the place and all this notes here and notes on the phone and emails and there's places in this book to put all of that stuff so it can just be in one solid spot through the whole process that'll be a yeah. a, a very important item out there in the tiny house <laughs> community uh just just the resources the information there's a lot of misinformation out there so th this will yes. this will cut right through that and uh you know give our listeners a uh, just a, an excellent resource into the A to Z's of tiny home lifestyle, how to build, how to live, all the all the details right. they need, not only from you, but these other people that uh, you mentioned that uh, are in the book and given their story as well. Uh, right. That's, that's, uh, because, that's phenomenal. You know, there's, that's a lot of viewpoints. It is a lot of viewpoints. And there's a lot of people that have done this. And I think that that's the thing that, you know, as the movement grows, we're seeing more and more people living tiny and communities and all these places and people go, Hey, I don't know how to do this. And I'm like, yeah. but there's more and more of us now. And we all have stories and we all have something to share, contribute. And the more of us that are speaking, then it helps p pave the way for others to come, come along too. Right. And um, so I think it's very important. It was one of the things that I really wanted in my book. I didn't want it to just be my story. I know there's so many people who have done amazing things and, you know, I, I feel very lucky that they even wanted to be interviewed in my, in my book. So I'm so <laughs> yeah. grateful uh, yeah. for, for their contributions as well. And they, again, are not famous tiny house dwellers. They're not people that are out there, you know, making a million dollars on YouTube videos. These are just right. somebody who went and bought a house or built a house and is sharing part of their story. So Understood. very cool. Yeah. 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 Hey, where can our listeners go to uh, to get a copy? I know it's, sure. it's it's you're you're in the launching stages right now, but yes. maybe you can go over when it's going to be launched and uh, and and how that can they uh, get a hold of a copy like that? 
Sure. So I have a Facebook page called Trailblazing Tiny. Mm -hmm. And pre-orders will begin for my book, I believe, August 1st. So we're like, we're right there. (laughs) The pre-orders will be receiving um, signed copies. And the first 25 are going to receive little custom-made bookmarks as well. And then I believe somewhere around August 15th to the 20th, it will go live on Amazon. So then it will be available Very to order soon. on Amazon. Yes, yes. And Depending on when the final proof copies get mailed back to me, I'll be hosting the virtual signing party on the Facebook page so everybody can come in and chat with me. And I'll be signing all the books live for everybody, unless there's like 200 people, and then I might have to just do a shorter ride. Right, know. right. Um, but I'll try to sign as many as I can, and then they'll all be shipped off to everybody before the book goes live. So they'll get them a, you know, maybe five to ten days before everybody else gets theirs. So okay. yeah. Yeah. Well, great information. I appreciate you taking the time to come on and share with us today and and uh Thanks. it's great to see you it's that that chair you're sitting in oh my goodness if hey, look, well, this so is a I got in that chair I don't think I could pull myself out <laughs> you know they're not as hard as you'd think because these are actually made to be chairs yeah. so they actually like have the slope so my feet I are sitting want out. to come out it looks no you don't want to come yeah. out no no <laughs> want to kick that's back. exactly what i meant that's so. exactly it but yeah they're not hard to get in and out of it's just the you don't want to it makes it really comfortable it's a really comfortable way to just kind of kick back and um relax at home and not have to worry about a couch or cleaning that kind of stuff up we wanted simple so right. which i'm I have promoted having hammocks in a tiny house for three and a half years, and I'm getting really angry now because I don't see anybody else doing it. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, people, get the hammocks. They're so great. Um, <laughs> we <we've, laughs> we really loved them. So I'm all about the hammocks, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, hey, uh, if you want to uh, learn a little bit more about the Tiny House Alliance USA, uh, we welcome you to visit our uh, site at the uh, tinyhousealliancusa.org, or you can visit us on our uh, Facebook page as well. And uh, come by, check us out, uh, see all that we have, all that we offer, and uh, that's it for today. So thank you very much for joining us, Melanie. Thanks, Andrew. I hope you guys all have right. a great afternoon. Appreciate all it. Right all right, bye. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in and uh, be sure to follow us and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.